and we're ready whenever you are. Good evening and thank you for attending tonight's City Council meeting. For those who are attending remotely, the camera and the council chambers is set up to show those attending in person tonight. The platform we are using has a, a raised hand feature. You will notice a picture of a hand in the upper right hand corner. When we reach the point in the meeting where the public had the opportunity to address council, you can click that button and be given your opportunity to address council. Please stand with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Scully? Here. Councilor Dillaba? Here. Councilor Fisher? Here. Councilor Kennedy? Here. Councilor Powers? Here. Councilor Reich? Here. Councilor Scamperly? Here. Quorum present. We have one public hearing tonight. It is regarding a local law to amend the Augsburg Municipal Code to allow the city of Augsburg to preempt its share of the three cents of the 3% sales tax collected by St. Louis County within the corporate city limits, as well as for automobile sales to city residents. It is going to be bill number 53, and I will open that up to public hearing. So please come up and you know, have anything to offer on it. No one to offer. Is there anyone remotely? I do not see any hands raised. I'll declare this uh, public hearing closed. And this brings us to council actions. Our first item of business will be read by Andrea Smith. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A local law to amend the Ogdensburg Municipal Code to allow the city of Ogdensburg to preempt its share of the 3% tax collected by St. Lawrence County within the corporate city limits, as well as for automobile sales to city residents. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Powers? Yes. Councilor Reich? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Skelly? Yes. Councilor Dillaba? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Approved. This brings us to the right to discussion. Does anyone have any items for discussion? Well, I listed three. This is a special meeting. We can only discuss what's listed. Well, the first one is the DRA. Mayor. Mayor, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can hear you. Okay. Mayor, uh, I'm asked uh, Andrea tonight to uh, just give you an overview of the DRI process for application, where we're at, uh, where our roadmap is for going forward. Uh, as you're all aware, this is a pretty short uh, application period we've got. So the next time you'll see this will be at our next uh, regular council meeting on the 13th, where we'll ask you to approve a resolution to send our application forward. So with that, I'm going to have Andrea give you an overview of our plan, where we're going with this, the projects we're looking at, uh, the folks that we're engaging in the timeline that we're on and uh, just uh, sought for any comments or discussion uh, with council. Andrea? Thank you. Uh, so as the city manager just alluded to, and as we discussed briefly at the last council meeting, the state has just announced round five of the downtown revitalization initiative, often referred to as the DRI. Uh, this year in round five, there uh, is a little, a few twists that are different than in the past four rounds. Each region is being asked to nominate um, their downtowns um, 
although this year the regions will have the ability to nominate either two downtown areas for award of $10 million each or one downtown area for $20 million um, for that particular downtown. And in round five, the other twist is that there are no exceptions. Previous applicants can select a new area and they can also submit. So no community is off the table for submitting. Um, applications must be received by 4 p.m. on September 15th. And they do require that communities have at least one community participation meeting. The city has submitted in the past, most recently in round four in 2019. Um, and we have not received a DRI award yet. Um, I have discussed submitting with the city manager as well as the council very briefly at our last meeting. And it is my recommendation that we do submit an application for round five and that we build on our previous applications, but we of course make some changes. Um, specifically, I'm recommending some changes to the downtown area. I provided you all with a, a, an outline of my comments this evening as well as a map of the proposed area. Um, so the biggest change in this area, it's about 210 acres in size, and it stretches a bit further west and east along the St. Lawrence River to include the Diamond site and the former Augsbury sites, um, in addition to the core historic downtown area and the Marina District. The reason for including both of those two sites, although they are a bit east and west of the downtown core is that those are sites that will have the ability to really impact what happens on our waterfront and catalyze uh, downtown reinvigoration. We also currently have an RFP out for the Diamond site right now. Those responses are due back on September 20th. Um, I wish it were a little earlier in, in hindsight, but with the dates for the, for the deadlines for the DRI, but be that as it may, we can still uh, make reference to the RFP that is out now and that we would anticipate including the projects uh, that we receive responses for in, in the strategic investment plan if we were successful in our application. In addition to public projects like water and, and wastewater projects and streetscapes, um, we are asking for feedback from the private sector as well as from not-for-profits that would be within the downtown area. Um, this evening, I'm, I'd be very happy for comments from council in terms of their initial thoughts on what the proposed boundary is. I am recommending that we have a, a virtual public meeting on the proposed application on September 1st. Um, due to COVID, I think that having a virtual meeting would allow for the greatest participation. Uh, so people can participate safely and that we can comply with the requirements. We have submitted questionnaires um, to several key property owners in the downtown area, asking them if they have projects that they're thinking of um, or that they'd like to do, if they could complete a simple questionnaire um, or contact the planning office for assistance in completing the questionnaire. Uh, we would like to include them in our application and assist them in, in filling them out um, so that we can, we can aid those projects in development along the way. There are some criteria that I have listed uh, in this memo as, as, that is included in the questionnaire that's required for projects. Um, I won't go through it exhaustively. This information is available online. And again, it was included in the questionnaires that have been sent out and are available in the, in the planning office for anybody that would like one. First and foremost, the projects are intended to be truly transformative in nature and have to be at least $100,000 or more in, in general scale and scope. The DRI will not fund more than 40% of privately sponsored projects, but it does have a caveat. If there is um, decarbonization and, and, uh, and sustainability incorporated, those projects may be allowed up to 50% of project costs. The projects have to be kind of shovel ready and ready to be implemented within two years. And these are pretty hard um, parameters for private projects. Those same parameters don't necessarily apply, especially in terms of uh, scale and match for municipal projects, but those are critical threshold criteria for private sector projects. 
all projects that receive funding have to be approved by the state, not by the local municipality. Uh, and they will be vetted through a local planning committee that would be assigned after award with assistance from the state. Among some of the public projects that have been included, although some of these are new, um, <clears throat> for public projects, I am recommending this is not an exhaustive list, but it's just some, some jumping off points, um, is a structural analysis and feasibility study for the Diamond Pier. This is uh, an area that we've received a number of questions on in the past and very recently through the RFP process in terms of what, um, what we know about the feasibility and structural stability of the pier and what it can be used for going forward. We don't really have an answer to any of those questions, so getting answers to those questions would benefit the future development of the diamond site. Wastewater improvements, including but not limited to a potential lift station that we expect would be necessary to support development again of the diamond and shade roller site. Wayfinding and streetscape improvements for the Ford Street corridor within the boundary. Development of a downtown skate park and regional recreation center. This would require that the city identify a site for this and a project of this magnitude could include pre-development needs such as demolition. Downtown mall parking improvements this year, there are some um, there are some kind of bonus points, if you will, for incorporating electric vehicle charging stations and sustainability measures. So the downtown mall is a perfect area to include those types of projects um, along with landscaping, wayfinding, signage. Um, again, the wayfinding and the signage uh, can all tie back to the, the Ford Street, Ford Street Streetscape project. Uh, and the landscaping can be part of a larger stormwater management and bioretention system, uh, which could get some sustainability points. Other projects might include updating our zoning code and our zoning map and digitizing that, and upgrades to other recreational trails, bike paths, and complete streets type projects. Again, that's not an exhaustive list, and I'm very happy to take comments from council as well as the public, but those are examples of public projects that uh, you would kind of commonly find in these types of applications that would support development within the downtown boundary. So um, just to kind of reiterate, these are due September 15th. Um, we have asked for the private sector ret to return their questionnaires to the planning office uh, by August 31st. So those projects could be included in a public meeting on September first and all of this would be presented again in a formal in a formal manner on September 13th at the next regularly scheduled city council meeting. Do we have any return questionnaires yet? I've not received any return. I have heard from several and several people that have received them that they are working on them and look forward to submitting them. I know down in, in the area that we designated for Restaurants and food in the Marina District area. I mean, obviously, I, I'm pretty sure we have some people that want to build things down there. So. If any of you would like an email copy of the form or if you'd like to pick up hard copies, I'd be happy to provide them too. Yeah. If you could send that to us, I'd like to get them to people too. And, sure. Uh, try and make this application as best we can, you know? So, nothing less than a hundred thousand dollars would be awarded to a business, right? And that is for no more than forty percent of the overall project that cost. That's my next part. Okay, so, so somebody would have to be spending two hundred fifty thousand. Sure. Right. <laughs> yes. Roughly, I mean, figuring forty percent mm -hmm. would be a hundred thousand. So, so for a project, if, if somebody was going to Build something. Obviously, two hundred fifty thousand is probably nothing these days. If somebody wants to build a brewery or, or add on to it, their hotel or business. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about that area down there, or what I think is recently purchased property near the shape of it. That uh, if somebody's going to build, so that's good. 
that a state requirement? That is, that's directly from the, uh, the, the project requirements are directly from the DRI guidebook. I scheduled a meeting, I say, on September 1st, so you can get this set. It's going to be a lot of competition. I expect there always is, so. Um, the skate park, I have presented you all with three maps of three different areas in which um, the director of public works and the recreation director and I have gotten together, identified city owned sites in three different areas of the city. Uh, we will be giving a more formal presentation on these sites at the September 13th meeting, but we wanted to get these to you all in advance so you could prepare your comments, share them with the public. Um, we'll make them available online so that people can see them. Again, these are, it's three different geographies in the city with uh, city owned sites highlighted. Um, so there's just some options there for where we might locate a future skate park. Is that, uh, is that it for discussion? Mm -hmm. Uh, Thanks so, for closure. go ahead. Thanks for closure, Celeste. Is that, is that still on? Is it going to be on there? Do we want to talk about that? I believe the city manager is going to give you an update on tax foreclosure. I'm just on the skateboard park. I, I just think we have a lot of park land in the city and we certainly have a lot of tax exempt property. So, you can take a look at that. You know, there, for example, the one in West River Street, there's someone, a private sector developer who's requested to purchase that, and we're getting a recommendation to put the skate park there. These are just areas of the city, and we've highlighted city-owned parcels. Um, yeah. There are there are locations that are identified within within the green belt, within existing park areas, and then there are also just city-owned parcels that we've highlighted. But again. The intent of having this on the agenda this evening, I believe, and, and certainly the city manager can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, is mostly to give you these maps um, so that you have them so that we can give you a more formal presentation on them at the meeting on the 13th. Yeah, so just heads up from my perspective, I just, I just think we can incorporate it on existing parklands so that we're not eating into our tax base more. That, that's my thoughts on it. So are we going to invite uh, some of the youth too to kick in and uh, to the, or participate in these in this meeting on the 13th to talk about what they want for a skate park? Do you know? Uh, <clears throat> Councilor, it'll be a public meeting. Anybody can come and comment. I, I think in order to keep us moving forward though it's probably more pertinent that we identify the site i don't want to get uh, too engaged in what we're doing etc cetera, etc cetera. there's a lot of things we need to identify the location so i think staying focused on location what people you know want desire Councilor reese just made some good points about not eating into land that could be used for something else so i think that's probably the biggest uh hurdle to get over here is is uh, where where does council want to see this placed Yeah, if you can send out a notice through the recreation director to, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how you reach out to them, but make, make sure they're invited to the meeting on the 13th. Please, thank you. How soon before we plan on building a skate park? Well, um, that I think is a good question for the city council, but I would say so if if it is, if it is something that you want to locate in in the downtown area that has been outlined as a DR, as a DRI area, it it would be eligible as a project. Um, that puts it a little further out in terms of 
full construction, but it does open the city up to a bit more funding. Um, so there's there are pros and cons with it, but again, um, this is really just sort of highlighting some different areas of the city geographically where the city owns property, some of which is presently park space, some of which is not, um, and then getting feedback from the council. Um, certainly the actual design, um, we would need some very specific public feedback on from the users. Um, that would be great and would be ideal. So this is probably going to take at least two years, you know, to get a skate park in under these conditions. I mean, we're applying for DRI. Not all the sites are located. The city owns property outside of the downtown area. So again, I mean, it really depends on what council's thoughts are in terms of where they'd like to see it located. Um, certainly we have to Councillor Reesh's point existing neighborhood parks, Hamilton Street, New York Avenue Park, Grove Street Park. It, it kind of also depends on, are we looking to create a regional destination or create more of a neighborhood style skate park? Um, whether or not it could be integrated into a New York Avenue Park, you know, for example, or does it need more space than that? So I think we need some of that direction from the council and then staff will be happy to uh, schedule additional workshops with the public or give you additional feedback based on the feedback we receive from council. I don't know that it has to be a two-year project. I think council can certainly allocate funding in this year's budget if you want to move it along more quickly, uh, but if you want to look at grants, then we have to be aware of the grant and timeline. So quality park, I understand, is $15,000. Or more if you're looking to do uh, a poured concrete, which I don't, again, I don't know what we're looking at doing. There's lots of options out there. It would be a draw from the stakeholders all over. Mm -hmm. I, I like the cheese plane. I, I like the cheese plane. It's a beautiful record for a lot of money. Uh, so at the cheese plant, if we can get that in, incorporated in the DRI, they would maybe pay for some of the demolition, which would help it, uh, or the cheese plant area. I mean, right here, it's not identified as a cheese plant, but. Uh, so that's where the old parking lot is. Right, right, which is nice. I like that as one of the main options. Again, I'd like to hear from the youth groups as well as other citizens in this town. Because there's, you know, every time I talk about a spot or a different spot, I hear a different perspective. Uh, some people don't want it near, uh, for example, a neighborhood that's going to have a lot of uh, restaurants and bars. Other people say if it's going to create vibrancy in that area, it, it may not be bad. Uh, we know they need concrete. We know they need water. We know they need bathrooms. We know they need benches. And where we have them temporarily isn't working. And personally, I think it ought to be moved back until we do come up with a spot and rebuild. And and I think that is the best answer I disagree for what we're doing. I know. I just don't think it was fair to just kick the kids out. You know. So or give it another spot. You know, it, 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 it sure is. When it was moved, and you know, there was a lot of problems because it was so dirty. I mean, there was options for the city council to, to act on things years and years ago and maintain it. Well, I think the point of these maps is to start a discussion about the future of the skate park. Um, I think that we all agree it, it was a community asset. Um, I think we even heard from the skaters previously that when it was first constructed, it was, it was used by people from all over. And so I think we just want to get back to get back to that. So, um, I think that there is an opportunity and I look forward to the community conversation. Sounds good. That's it. So the text for closure process is the last thing? No, for discussion. I think lots of Are we going to discuss the tax for closure? Yeah, Mayor, just uh, I wanted to give council an update. Uh, uh, next, uh, by the end of this week, you'll have uh, a full package uh, to review before the next meeting. 
Um, we couldn't finish the uh, the local law changes that needed to be done. We've got a couple issues that uh, our attorneys are still running to ground, but I wanted uh, council to know where we are, which is, again, we've given the, uh, the county notice that we will no longer be collecting there. Uh, county tax is a matter of uh, responsibility when we collect the city tax, and we're now working through the, uh, again, ultimately the several changes that need to be made to the charter and our local laws to begin our own uh, process by collecting our own sales tax and uh, having them move in the direction of theirs. And the subsequent actions to relinquish our foreclosure responsibility um, in the hopes that the county will take that over. Uh, of course, that is the, the one point of contention the county contends that they're, they would not be responsible for and don't want to be responsible for. Uh, but we're going to let the attorneys work through that. So uh, by the end of the week, you'll have the proposed package that will be coming forward for uh, comment and review uh, prior to the meeting on September 4th. Thank you, Steve. Oops. Okay. 